So um, good morning and welcome everyone to the 2016 Spring Symposium, um, a New Insights um, on Early Life Stress and Mental Health. So uh, I am Yi Wei Tai and I'm the director of the Picard Institute for Learning and Memory at MIT. Before I begin, uh, I would like to um, thank the organizers uh, behind, the, behind the scenes um, who worked very hard to make this day um, happen. Uh, they are um, Aaron Edwards, uh, Aja Bakar, Josh Sarinala, and Brittany Greenlaw, and um, a few others. So uh, I would like to thank them very much for their hard work. And uh, I would also like to thank all the speakers uh, for traveling here today. Finally, um, we are really very, very fortunate um, to have two important people that have shaped our institute here with us today. Um, MIT's President Raphael Reif and JPB President Barbara Picor. So um, let me welcome uh, Raphael to the podium um, to open the symposium. Raphael. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Liu Wei, thank you for, for uh, not just uh, introducing today's session, but also for your really terrific leadership of the Peak Hour Institute. I also want to acknowledge uh, former directors of the Peak Hour, Professors Mark Baer and Susumu Tonegawa, uh, and really, as, as Liu Wei said, as well as uh, all the speakers and guests here this morning with us. Uh, I went through, I don't know many of you, I know some of you, and I went through the list of attendants, and I gotta tell you, this is a quite, a, quite an impressive group, quite a tremendous group, tremendously accomplished, but also tremendously large. Uh, I'm, I'm proud that the work of the Peak Hour Institute has brought all of you here today. And above all, I want to acknowledge the extraordinary leadership and support of Mrs. Barbara Peak Hour the president of the JPB Foundation. In partnership with her late husband, Jeffrey, Barbara's vision and generosity brought the Peak Hour Institute to life and built it into a world-class institution. And Barbara's deep concern for the well-being of children in poverty brought us all of us here today. Barbara, you're a very special person. Now, in, 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 in the, at MIT, you don't say statements like that without providing data. So, <laughs> so let me demonstrate, demo, demonstrate what distinguishes Barbara as a philanthropist. And let me offer two examples. The first is her creation of the Peak Hour Institute Innovation Fund, which supplies general three-year grants for Peak Hour faculty. Because faculty may use these funds as they choose, these innovation fund grants are priceless to the research enterprise. They enable, as all of you would appreciate, high risk, high reward research. They allow mid-career research transitions. They provide the flexibility to launch spin-out companies. And they make it possible to leverage funding from traditional grant sources as well. A second example, two years ago, Barbara created the Peak Hour Institute's Junior Faculty Development Program. Recognizing the enormous importance of cultivating the success of our new faculty stars, the program provides dedicated awards for junior faculty and a strong new mentoring program. Together, the Innovation Fund and the Junior Faculty Development Program represent the work of a special kind of philanthropist, a person who has not only given generously in financial terms, but who has given of herself, who created an important new research community, and who has nurtured it, watched over it, developed it, and cared for it ever since. Barbara, your foresight and thoughtfulness are an inspiration, and I thank you very much for your leadership. Those of, you, those of you who know Barbara know very well that she doesn't like any of this, uh, which is just a good reason for me to do it. As an electrical engineer in a room full 
of brain and cognitive scientists, educators, and clinicians. Uh, I will not attempt to add to your professional dialogue this morning, but I will say, speaking simply as a fellow human being, that the topic of this symposium could not be more important for our society, morally or practically. Thanks to pioneering research done by many of you here today, we now begin to understand biologically how chronic childhood stress can produce deep lifelong damage. Together you're teaching us how chronic stress changes the way children's brains work and ultimately, tragi tragically, that it changes how their lives unfold. You have already brought us profound new understanding and I'm thrilled to hear, <clears throat> apologize, <clears throat> I'm thrilled to hear the optimism that I sense this morning of this group. The sense that we could be on the verge of identifying practical interventions and lasting solutions. As some of you may have heard, last Friday, MIT launched a major capital campaign, the MIT Campaign for a Better World. The people of the Picower Institute live that aspiration every day. And I'm proud to be here with all of you this morning. Now I'm told that in the brain, the real action comes from connections between neurons. That same idea explains what was going on this morning before I started talking. So it is inspiring to witness so many connections being made across disciplines, across institutions, and across generations. I wish I could stay to see and hear more of it this morning. I'm sure that you will enjoy the rest of the conference. And with that, let me take the microphone and take it back and bring it to Lee Wei Tsai to introduce today's speakers and a very important speaker next. Thank you all. Thank you, President Reif, for the very kind introduction. And um, now let me turn the podium to our dear friend and our most generous benefactor, Barbara Picower. So thank you. I, this is kind of embarrassing for me uh, because the work that we do is not in, about me as an individual. It's about what we can do to make the world a better place. And so for those of you who don't know very much about um, the JPB Foundation, I would like to tell you that we specialize in three areas, most of which are interconnected. Uh, the first one is basic medical research, which is um, represented by our gift to MIT, and which I am exceedingly proud of. Uh, but also, uh, we have been doing some work with leading scientists across the, war uh, the United States on um, Parkinson's disease, diabetes, and um, Alzheimer's. And what we do is to approach our work from a collaborative point of view. And so in each of these areas, we have scientists who come together a couple of times a year, work together, and over the years learn to trust each other in an intimate environment and collaborate together. And really the only um, requirement besides being brilliant is that they agree in advance to work with each other and, and to do experiments to share uh, uh, postdocs and, and you know other really important information and it's really worked out great. Uh, the second area that we work in is in the environment and what we are concerned with is that the bad things, and there are many that occur in our environment, occur mostly to underserved people. They're the ones that live in the poor neighborhoods. They're the ones that don't have healthy housing, et cetera, et cetera. And then the third area that we work in, which concerns what we're all here to talk about today, is in the area of poverty. And Overall, our objective is to overcome barriers to poverty so that people can lead uh, good lives. So um, we approach, we've been 
interested for, I guess, about five years in the effects of stress on the brain. And uh, thanks to the Wee Way, when I had first mentioned this to her, she had put together a uh, conference on stress in the brain. Um, since I've been talking to her regularly, we came to decide we would do this conference every two years. And the second conference that we had, well, I'll go back, the first conference that we had was a little bit above my intellect. It was mostly about um, what stress does. It was very scientific. It was very much basic medical research. The second conference we did was a combination of basic research and um, things that people like me could understand, you know. <laughs> Um, the third year, this year, uh, we convinced Li Wei that we wanted to work on children, and we've been, the foundation has been very much interested in what is called toxic stress, and which I know uh, some of our speakers will be talking about this for most of the day. The reason JPB is interested in this is because of the, we, we think, if a child uh, is born with what we call toxic stress um, and doesn't get proper interventions, and very often they don't because we don't know what the proper interventions are, they become a burden to society from the time that they're born until the time that they die. And the thing that we found so interesting about toxic stress, and now this is, you know, my feelings, it may not be scientifically correct, but it's my feeling that a child born into, with toxic stress develops diseases all through its life, and that if you really looked at it, you could trace it back to the point when they were first born or within the first two years of their life. Um, and so we think this has a very important role. If, if we could find ways to treat this, that we would be able to... Um, Sol save a child from being born ill and being born in poverty. Um, and mostly we feel that the economy of our country is really becoming, is really being spent more and more on, on not certainly not preventing diseases, <laughs> but on um, paying for the cost of the disease. And that winds up into billions, if not trillions of dollars over the cost of 30, 40 years. So we feel that if we all work together, not only will the children be doing better, but our country will be doing much better because we will be able to spend our money on other things. So I'm very excited about today. And I'm not going to take any more of anybody's time because we have people who you really could learn from uh, coming up to speak. And I thank you all for coming, and I hope you find today as rewarding as I know this will be. Thank you.